Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I didn't realize till recently that the rest of my addiction story didn't show up on my uh, YouTube. It like showed like five minutes of it. And I think I left off at where I was going to college and I was just going and getting high and not going to class. And I ended up dropping out. So after that, um, I ended up uh, moving in to an apartment that was like three bedroom, two bathroom. And like at all times, like 15 people were living there and um, it was absolutely insane. And uh, instead of working um, and doing my bills, I was working and partying. So like that was my motive every day. It was to wake up and party after I worked. So um, I ended up losing that apartment, obviously, because you can't live, if you can't balance work and partying and life all in the same, then you're not going to survive, obviously. So I ended up living back with a family member. Um, uh, it was it was a lot, um, a lot of drama, a lot of, you know, <sighs> misguided, good doing, doing good that I thought I was doing. Um, anyway, so... I had people in my family that had medical issues, so they were prescribed painkillers. Um, and I ended up, every time we'd have a family get together, I would end up taking a few. Um, I didn't figure out until I was too deep in that I was already addicted to them. Like I was waking up and feeling crappy, so I'd go to them and be like, hey, can I get a few? Um, and that's how my painkiller addiction really started. Um, I slowly felt my soul just like leaving my body. I was not Christine anymore. I had become this other personality kite. I was this party person. Um, so I continued for a few years using just small dose painkillers until I started. Uh, it was after I had my son. Um, oh, and while my pregnant, during my pregnancy, I got sober. Uh, I, I, there's something in my brain that like, I think it's in any mom's brain that when you're pregnant, uh, you do what's best for your baby. And my body was going through so many different changes. And I was like, you know what, this is the time, this is when I need to get clean. So I, I got clean for my son. Like I stayed clean. I did not smoke cigarettes. I did not smoke weed. I did not drink. I did not take pills. I did not do anything. Um, and I was really strong and, and I stood my ground with that. So I had a healthy baby boy. Um, and not long after I had him, I ended up, ended up going back to work because I was 19 when I had him. So I didn't, I didn't have the urge to breastfeed or even be motherly. Um, my grandma ended up taking care of my son for basically the first six months of his life. Like, uh, he, I'm sure, I'm sure he was so confused when he was little because he was either seeing me randomly or he was with my grandma like all the time. So um, I ended up after I came to finally, uh, after a while of struggling, I ended up moving in, me and my sister moved into an apartment together. Um, and we were working opposite schedules and I was working night shift and I was working at Waffle House and I was introduced to this girl I was working with and she gave me the very first oxycodone 10 I had ever had. And it was so much stronger than the regular, like lower set per set 7.5s I was taking. Um, and one night she was like, you know, if you really want to feel the full effect of it, you should snort it. So my stupid, young, naive self, uh, I snorted it and <laughs> that was it. That was it. That was the end. I was addicted. I wanted them every day. Every time I worked, I would take them. I would do doubles. I would do triples. I worked for 24 hours straight one time. I, that was it. I was addicted. I was, I was addicted before that, but I was addicted to that specifically. I needed Roxy's. That's what they were called. Um, I progressed from the tens, of course, to the fifteens. And then one day I couldn't find any fifteens. And this guy I knew, he was like, I can get thirties. And I was like, are you kidding me? Oxycodone thirties? Like that will last me a lot longer. 
I'm stupid. Because no, when you snort a pill, it lasts just as long as a lower dose one. Uh, it, it lasts like a few hours and then you need another one. And let me tell you, street value of an oxycodone 30 nowadays is $40. At the time, it was $25. Can you imagine spending $50 a day or sometimes $75 a day? Because once you once your body gets used to that much in your system, you're taking more and more and more, you know? So here I am taking two to three a day, spending $75 at max a day for my high. Uh, you imagine all the stuff I could have bought for my son with that. Um, and not only that, but my sister also was taking them. And that's completely and totally my fault because I, I introduced her to them because she was taking regular painkillers. And one day she saw me snort one and she was like, what is that? You know, like, and I was so disconnected and soulless. I gave her one. I was like, you know what? You, here, you know, you're hurting. Let me help you. Uh, and all addicts feel the same. They think, well, it's going to do no harm. It ruined her life. I'm her big sister and I ruined her life. And given, yes, it's her choice to take it. But as her big sister, I should have said, you know, you don't need this. Like, the, the, this is not what you want. I, I wasn't there. I, Christine, was not there. Kite was there. Kite, the soulless succubus, was there. So uh, we stayed on him for a while. And uh, finally, I ended up meeting the man I'm with now, my husband. And uh, I don't know what he saw in me because I was still in a black hole of addiction. And uh, we just ended up connecting. And I think he and himself had his own problems and he connected with mine and he tried to fix me, um, which he did help me. You know, he told me one day, he was like, look, something's going on with you and you're not telling me the truth about everything. And I told him, I was like, I'm on pills. Like, I snort pills. And he was like, okay, what do I need to do to help you? So we found a methadone clinic, and uh, me and my sister both started going. And we were there for a while until, you know, I wanted to have another baby. And I was, I had a Marina at the time, which is a five-year IUD. Um, and when you're ready to get pregnant, you usually try to take it out about 12 months before. So I got it taken out, and about six months in, um, I came off the methadone and uh, my husband got me like a withdrawal basket. It had all these like Benadryl, nausea meds, uh, Powerade, all this stuff. And I, I spent a whole week, a week and a half in bed withdrawing and I got clean. Uh, I ended up getting pregnant um, not long after I got clean. And unfortunately, I lost it. And uh after that, I, I relapsed for a little while um, until I found out I was pregnant with Thomas. And as soon as, as soon as I found out I was pregnant with Thomas, I put everything down. Everything. Uh, cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, everything. I was like, you know, I want this baby. I, I want this baby so bad. And I did everything I could to take him, you know, take care of him and me. And we ended up having our first baby. And after Thomas, it's like I did get postpartum. Um, after Thomas, because I felt like I was doing so much more for him. And I did so much more for him that I didn't do for my son, my first son. And, uh, but I was becoming the mom and the wife that I, or girlfriend at the time, but I am now the wife and mom that I wanted to be all this time. I was just holding myself back. I was, this was my limit. I could only be this limit. And after getting sober, I blasted through that limit. Like I realized that I didn't need to put limits on myself. I myself was holding myself back. And uh, I can't tell you how good it feels to be me again, to not be this empty shell of a human. Um, I still need counseling. Uh, I still need help sometimes getting through. I still uh, have to be on a certain medicine to stay sober, but it's nothing like methadone. It's nothing like being on pills, like pain pills to keep me sober. And I have a goal 
to come off the medicine I'm on to be able to be completely 100% sober. It's going to take a lot, though. It's going to take support from my family, support from my friends, support from my counselors, support from my groups. I can do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. Anyone can do it. You just have to want it. You just have to want it. You have to want to have a better life. You have to be able to make it through that withdrawal. You have to be able to put everything down and say, I'm done. And I'm telling you, you'll blast through that limit. So anyway, I love you guys. And I'm sorry that only half of it went up the first time. I don't know what's going on with the computer, but I love y'all. Like and subscribe. Um, we are going to have another video going up soon um, with my kids. We're going to do what's in the box challenge. Keep an eye out for that. And I will see you guys in the next one.